Here is another new step in the art of firefighting, the science of fire extinguishment. For years, the axiom has been water puts out fires. Every step has been toward getting to fires quicker and placing more and more water on each fire. In the last 25 years, fire engines have developed from horse-drawn carts to the highly efficient apparatus seen in this parade of the New Haven, Connecticut Fire Department. Alarm systems now tell of a fire in a few seconds. Electronic controls bring fire companies speeding to the scene of a blaze, and the fire service itself has improved its methods of attack. Watch that squad truck go into action. The line was drawn off even before the truck stopped. There's the call for water. The attack begins. The men are going in. There goes that line into the building, in action in just a few seconds. Now in comes the aerial ladder, another engineering step in improving the attack on fire. Watch the men in this demonstration at New Haven. Each company is an efficient, highly trained team of firefighters. The fire service and fire equipment manufacturers have developed better pumps, hose, nozzles, ladders, engines, high pressure streams, high and low pressure fog, several kinds of foam, venting and scaling operations, and many other devices and techniques to aid in firefighting. Here you see this coordinated attack of men and machines. Apparatus can work together. This is modern firefighting. But all of these improvements are designed to get more water on the fire to get more water in there where it will cool and extinguish the fire. We have improved everything except the water, the only thing that touches the fire. We can break it up into fog to make it more effective, and here is an improved fog nozzle being tested. But what else can we do with the water? Is it as good as it should be? Here are two streams of water. They look alike, but what a difference. On the right is plain water, but on the left is a new step forward in fire extinguishment. This is wetter water. Let's look at it more closely. Improving water is the job of the chemist, for both fire and fire extinguishment are chemical reactions. Here at a laboratory of Carbide and Carbon Chemicals Corporation, chemists have made miraculous changes in water for firefighting. They have given water two new qualities. It spreads and covers, it penetrates. Here is a demonstration of the new spreading quality on wall board. Compare the ink spots in the upper left-hand corners of these two test setups. See how the ink spreads in the wetter water. Here is further proof. Look at those rivulets of water going down that inclined surface. This is plain water. Here's treated or wetter water, and look at the complete coverage. On a burning surface, that means no islands of fire left untouched. This is important, but more important to firefighting is the new penetrating action. Here are two beakers of water. A small amount of Unox penetrant is poured into one and thoroughly mixed. Now a cotton ball is dropped into the plain, untreated water. Look at it, it floats. Now a ball goes into the wetter water. Down it goes, wet through in a second. Watch again. Compare these results. One floats indefinitely, the other sinks immediately. The two on the plain water sit up there like ducks. The two in the wetter water show the new penetration that chemistry has given water. But let's not confine ourselves to laboratory tests. Here's a cotton bale at the testing grounds at Institute West Virginia. This bale was burned for four hours. And here's Mr. James J. Dugan of Carbide and Carbon Chemicals Corporation applying plain water. He gave up after applying 400 gallons. Here's the bale hours later, still burning. Now watch the action of wetter water on this burning bale. Look at it go in. See how it blackens the ash wherever it hits. It gets to the heart of a cotton fire and puts it out. This bale was extinguished with only 15 gallons and all the unburned cotton was salvageable. This same scene has been repeated in cotton mills many times. Now we see this new penetrating action on a different material. This interesting test shows the ability of wetter water to penetrate through wallboard, which is normally water repellent. Duplicate tests of this kind were run. First you see plain water being applied to the front of a board while fire burns up the reverse side. This water was applied for 20 minutes. The fire is still burning up the back of the board. You can see where the fire burned through despite the plain water application. There is no penetration through the board although plain water was continuously applied to the front of the board. 
Now the plain water is applied to the reverse side to keep the board from being completely consumed. Notice how the plain water runs down and does not penetrate the char. Now the board is pretty wet and the fire is out. Watch the wetter water test. The amount of water per minute applied to each of these boards was the same. But see the quick penetrating cooling action of the water with only 1% Unox penetrant. It goes right through the board and puts out the fire on the other side. At no time was wetter water applied to the back of the board. You can see that that fire is out. Here is the comparison. On the left is the board that was extinguished by applying plain water on both sides. You can see where it burned right through and it would certainly have been entirely consumed if water had not been applied to both sides. On the right, you see the board that was extinguished by wetter water applied to one side only. At the University of Maryland, we again see this new penetrating action tested. Here are judges and timers observing a test of wetter water versus plain water on sawdust bales. This test is with plain water. The bale is primed and lighted, timers are ready, and now it is attacked with plain water. There is little steam evident. He's still pouring water in there. There's a lot of runoff, and it takes quite a while to put out the fire. Now a judge feels the sawdust and finds that only surface wetting was obtained. Now watch a similar fire put out with wetter water. Look at that steam. Plenty of cooling action even on this small fire. Out it goes in one quarter of the time, and here are the results of the test. Look at this. 46 seconds were required for extinguishment using plain water, while only 12 seconds were needed using wetter water. About one quarter of the time, and look at the comparison of the amounts of water used. 17 gallons of plain water against only three and a half gallons of wetter water. Only one fifth as much wetter water. And here are comparative wallboard tests run at the University of Maryland. The fire is lighted and is now burning up the back of the board. This is wetter water being applied through a low pressure fog nozzle. See that penetration and cooling action. By applying water to one side, it puts the fire out on the other side. Now the board is wet through, and most of that fire is coming up from the bottom. But the board is already so wet that it is curling and has to be supported. Now the fire is out and the board is so wet that it has broken in half. Let's examine the wet wall board. The judge breaks off a piece to observe the thorough penetration. But look what happened on the plain water test. The board is gone. But what has wetter water given the fire service? Let's go back to the laboratory to see what this new penetration and coverage can do for you. Here we see two small fire starters. Now both are fully involved. We take plain water and pour it into the cap on the left so that the fire starter is resting in water. Nothing happens. Nothing happens at all. It's still burning just like the dry one at the right. But now we pour wetter water into the other cap. Look at it knock out that fire. It wasn't even poured on the flame. That's what you get with water made wetter with Unox penetrant. Penetration, speed of knockdown, and quicker extinguishment. Let's see how it works on a larger scale. Watch the speed of knockdown in the fire at the test grounds at Institute West Virginia. That 600 pounds of yellow pine had an eight minute pre-burn. There goes Mr. Dugan with wetter water. Look at that fire blackout. He shuts down his line, moves around, opens up again and out goes the other side. Just one turn around the crib and the fire is out. Now watch the same thing happen in these two shack fires in West Virginia. There goes Chief Lloyd Lehman of Parkersburg, West Virginia into one with plain water. The fire does not go down quickly. There is little or no generation of steam. There's lots of heavy gray smoke and plenty of work to be done before the fire is knocked down. 
Now watch a similar fire attacked with wetter water. Chief Lehman wanted to see for himself this new wetter water in action, and you can see the difference too. There, see how that fire is knocked down immediately. Notice how much whiter the smoke is. Now you can see the heavy steam generation. The flames are out. The chief is able to go in immediately without much punishment. There is a great deal of steam being generated and very little runoff in that building. That shows the speed with which wetter water knocks down and extinguishes a Class A fire. And the same speed of knockdown and complete extinguishment is observed wherever wetter water is used. Here's a test at Baker, Oregon. Now watch the complete confidence these men have that wetter water will knock down the flames quickly. There they go in. They're almost in the flames. There's no fear. They have complete confidence. And look at that volume of telltale steam. That's proof of cooling action. The fireman puts a burst up under that burning eave. Out it goes and even the smoking stops. Now what is the secret of this speed of knockdown and quick extinguishment? It's coverage plus penetration. All the water that hits the fire goes in to fight the heat. Watch this test on a piece of charred wood, the same kind of char you have in any fire involving wood. There is plain water being applied. Look at those drops rolling down into the pan. Now watch wetter water in action. No runoff. Look at those drops spread out and go in. Every drop of wetter water that hits the fire goes in just like that. See this in close-up, it's plain water, but it looks like mercury, doesn't it? That's plain water without a wetting agent. No coverage, little penetration, practically all runoff. Now watch wetter water. There's the answer. First it spreads, then it penetrates. No runoff. This is why water plus Unox penetrant works so fast on fires in houses or in forests. Now to some more tests made at the University of Maryland Fire College by Chief James W. Just. The judges and timers confer on the test. That's Roy Woolley, assistant editor of Fire Engineering on the right, Chief Just in the center, and Hugh McNair of Carbide and Carbon Chemicals Corporation. Here we see a more elaborate house fire test. Two buildings, essentially the same, both containing considerable amounts of wood. That's Chief Roy Giamatteo of Glen Echo, Maryland, on the nozzle. He goes in with plain water, and he is driven back. He's taking a lot of punishment from the smoke. He can't knock the fire down. It's flashing back on him. Finally, he's working his way in. Now he's getting in. Here's the runoff. That water does no good, just causes water damage. And now we duplicate this fire in another shack, and this time we use wetter water. You will notice the fire is more intense in this building. It was given more of a pre-burn. But notice how quickly he knocks it down. He wasn't driven back. There is no flashback here. He knocks the fire down quickly, and notice the generation of steam. It's tremendous. That steam shows that the water is doing its most good. The fire is knocked down now. He's just overhauling here and there. The steam doesn't bother him. He isn't taking any punishment. The runoff is hardly noticeable. Now the judges move in to examine the building and check the penetration of the wetter water. There's a man in the shack already. The fire is completely out. And look at these results. One minute and nine seconds were required to put out the fire using plain water. Only 39 seconds were needed using wetter water and see how much farther your water supply will go using wetter water. 42 gallons of plain water were needed on the one house, while only 24 gallons of wetter water did a faster extinguishing job in the other. And wetter water not only excels on Class A fires, but on Class B fires as well. Watch the action of wetter water on this benzol fire in this large-scale test setup at Institute West Virginia. Here goes a man in. Now see how fast he knocks down the fire. He drives it back across the tank. There is no flashback. That wetter water is forming an unburnable emulsion on the surface of the benzol. 
Now he's driven the fire to the other side, and out it goes. Here is the emulsion. This temporary foam blanket will not burn, so there is no flashback. This is why wetter water works on spill fires. And here is a series of tests at the University of Maryland on Class B fires. Here's a kerosene fire. Again, we have directly comparative tests. This 50 square feet of kerosene will be extinguished with high pressure fog. This proved quite effective in the control of Class B fires in airplane crashes, but he's having trouble with this kerosene. It flashes back. It's hard to put out. That's a tough fire, but he's working on it. You can see that he's unable to put that kerosene out quickly. It's a long fight, but he finally drives it into the corner and gets it out. Now we'll repeat this test, only this time with wetter water and low pressure fog. Observe the difference. Look at the immediate knockdown, the absence of flashback. That's all out it goes. Now we go back to benzol again. With plain water, we find that it cannot be extinguished. This operation continued for over two minutes without extinguishing the benzol. You can see he's able to knock it down slightly and get some cooling action in there, but he cannot extinguish it. It just keeps flashing back, and it continues to burn even under the fog. After two minutes, this test was abandoned, the fire still burning. Now we go to a similar fire, only this time with wetter water. Discharge the same, pressure the same, everything's the same except that this is wetter water, and watch the difference. He's going in on it. The fire is responding immediately. It's knocked down very quickly. And now you can see only a few elements of fire on the side banks, and now the fire is out. Here's that unburnable emulsion shown again. That's what knocks out benzol fires, and here are the results. The unsuccessful plain water attack was discontinued after over two minutes of punishment to the man on the nozzle. Wetter water extinguished this fire in 13 seconds flat. No amount of plain water could put it out. The benzol still burns. But the fire in the second pit was put out with only seven and three quarter gallons of wetter water. These are the results you get with wetter water on fires in paint and lacquer plants. The unburnable emulsion kills Class B fires. This is wetter water in action, the new step forward in firefighting. Here it is on fuel oil in a final test. Look at that knockdown. Water that covers and penetrates. Wetter water with Unox penetrant. Thank you.